This is Twit. All right. You've probably heard already of the Human Genome Project. Who hasn't? But what about the Human Screenome Project? project uh not scream home that would be different the human screaming uh, project that's, that's something different this is the human screen home project it's an interesting concept that involves taking snapshots of our phones who people who are participating anyways every five seconds in order to better understand how we live our lives in the digital realm and joining us to talk about uh our screen homes maybe someday we'll have our own screen homes to talk about is tanya basu uh from mit technology review welcome to the show tanya hi it is thank great. you very much for having me you bet it's it's awesome to get you on thank you for taking time for us today so uh first of all Exactly what is a screenome and do you have a screenome? I'm very curious. Ooh, I was wondering that too. Good question. We all have screenomes. Technically, okay. it's not that mine's public at this point. <laughs> I don't think yours is either. No, um, so the idea, <laughs> the idea is, as you alluded to, uh, the genome where, you know, scientists were trying to document every single uh, gene in our system and try and understand and combat genetic diseases. And the idea is that you know, there's a lot of social ills that can be connected to technology and technology use. So why don't we screenshot our screens every five seconds and understand what we're doing with our time on our digital devices to understand whether and how it's affecting our lives. Now, in order to do this, it requires a pretty big ask of anyone who might be participating. Um, it, I mean, it's huge you, ask. You're basically giving over every detail of how you use your <laughs> smartphone in order to actually participate in this. Why? Why would anyone ever choose to do that? Is is I guess my first question. Did you happen to talk with people who were willing to give over that information and kind of how do they navigate that decision to do that? I actually was not able to talk to anyone, but you know, a lot of people are willing to do this. Apparently, Byron Reeves, who's the researcher leading this project. Uh, said that he's got hundreds of people offering their information. And given that people are growing up digitally native and have a sense of what is going into the project, they're very open about it. They're not hiding it. Um, there apparently is an audience of people who are willing to provide their information for science. Now, one of the questions that I have, and I, you know, you, I feel like we've all taken that class where we learn how to properly read a scientific study and understand what parts go into it and, and uh, what's involved there. One of the things that I have, and I'm curious if it is a um, sort of concern for the folks that are doing this project, this study, is whether or not the data is going to be influenced by the fact that someone realizes that they do indeed have a f um, an app screenshotting them every five seconds. Is this something that they've taken into consideration? Because I think it would change yeah, my it, right. uh, my method of, of use on my device if I were aware of the fact that every five seconds. I just don't want everyone to know that I really love Teletubbies still, you know? And I want to <laughs> well, now we know. Oh, darn Now it. we know. This is live. Shoot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something I actually asked. And I think that what's really interesting is he, Reeves was very hesitant to tell me that, you know, yeah, someone is going to change their activity based on, you know, the fact that there is this presence hovering in the background mm -hmm. and taking your screenshots every five seconds. But he said that what he's found, um, they've collected about 30 million screenshots, by the way, so far from hundreds of volunteers. And what they found is that people tend to forget. I the way I think about it is actually it's kind of like reality TV syndrome where you're aware of the cameras being there for a bit, but as you go on your daily activities, as you use your phone, um, it seems like a lot of these participants seem to forget or at least not care as much. And so um, another question I asked was about privacy. You know, there's bank account information going here. There could be illegal information going on. There's private text. There's private information that's just being displayed on your screen constantly. And he said, we have access to that. We're not going to see it because there's a computer that's going through and making sure that that information is not being shown. But apparently people are comfortable enough to, you know, do their private sensitive information and have it displayed on their screens. I mean, more and more in this day and age, I, I think there's a desensitization happening around what we feel comfortable mm -hmm. 
sharing. And the, the more we share, the less strange it is to share more. The more you know? we share, the less we care. <laughs> yes, that's that's exactly it. It feels that way anyways right now. Um, okay, so what is this, what is this informing them, uh, the people who are kind of running this project? What exactly can they glean about this when they see one person using their phone one way and another person using their phone the other way? Like, what does it lead to? Where does that path lead? I think a lot of times when we think about how people are using their phones, we're thinking, oh, okay, um, these people use their phones X amount of minutes per day. And this is something you actually see a lot in children and teenagers and how we're understanding how they use it. Um, research has usually said, oh, okay, teens use their phones from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed and they use it for two and a half hours per day. That's a really, you know, vague statistic that doesn't necessarily give you any granularity, doesn't give you any information. And what researchers are hoping to understand is, okay, perhaps, you know, kid A is using his phone uh, to produce YouTube videos and uh, is really obsessed with food, for example, and maybe watches a lot of recipes and tries to create that sort of content for TikTok. Uh, person B might be different in that they're just primarily content generators and users where they're just texting friends or family constantly and using their phones as a way to connect with others. So understanding those differences, even in the same demographic and age group is very interesting and important in our understanding of how uh, perhaps certain people are using their phones in certain ways and others are you know, using it and maybe getting, like I said earlier, um, affected by it in their daily lives. So what's the, the scope then? Um, this is kind of a project a certain number of people are participating already. Are, are the people who are running this, are they hoping to broaden that out so that anyone can jump on board and choose to share five, every five seconds of their phone use uh, if they really want to do that? Um, like, what, <laughs> is, is there a pathway for people who want to get uh, involved in this uh, that they can do so? There is a website. They just went public. Uh, they announced their launch in Nature last week, Nature the Journal. Uh, you can join if you'd like. They are actively searching for volunteers. Obviously, as with any scientific study, the more people that are part of the experiment, the better the data, the better the information that's provided, the better our understanding. Um, so if you are so inclined to <laughs> offer your uh, phone and whatever you're doing, uh, you can join at Human Screenome Project. That's right. And I'm looking it up right now. Screenomics.stanford.edu. Uh -huh. And they've got a nice, uh, nice site with a, a bunch of information there. If you're if you're totally on the fence about sharing everything that you do online, uh, maybe you can go there and you know and fall just, off the just fence. Fall off the fence <laughs> into the <laughs> deepest chasm. That's right. Very fascinating stuff. Interesting that we are that we are here. I think I think the reason the initial reason I reached out was just that that kind of shock, mm -hmm. shocking moment when you realize every five seconds of your phone use and like mm -hmm. I think anyone would read that. And then go. Wait a minute. What? How do I use my phone? Yeah. Like, would I, would I even feel comfortable with that? Uh, whether whether you're doing something that makes you feel uncomfortable or not, like it's just it's a that's an open book that I, I just don't know that I'm ready for that. Uh, so I'm I guess I'm impressed that enough people are willing to do that. Um, <laughs> Tanya Basu, we really appreciate you taking time uh, to join us today. If people want to follow your work online, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter. Uh, my hashtag is at my hashtag. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we should start a hashtag for you, too. We should. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me at Tanya Basu, T-A-N-Y-A-B-A-S-U. Right on, Tanya. And hashtag <laughs> awesome. We'll just <laughs> oh, that. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.